Hey guys, thanks for watching TFB TV. I'm Joel with the Precision Rifle Network, and today what I have for you is a complete review of the Seekins SP10 in 308. We're going to get you the full specs and the details on this rifle, and we're going to take it out to distance, at least as much as I have available. Typically that's 600 yards. I may be able to get it out to 1,000 for you. All right, let's get started with the breakdown of the rifle. Uh, we're going to go from the, uh, from the butt end here all the way to just the tip on her and we're going to give you the details. So here we go. Um, you know, Seekins earlier last year and, and even into the beginning of this year offered the Magpul PRS stock on this rifle. And they've since gone to something that they can create in-house. They're calling this the ProComp 10X. And I believe they make this in-house. You know, just about every piece of a Seekins rifle is made in-house by them. And so the quality controls uh, are very high. I, for one, appreciate that as opposed to a, a shop that outsources various parts. Uh, these guys do it all themselves. The ProComp 10X is adjustable for length of pull via rubber spacers. It also has a comb height adjust. On the back side of the rifle here, you've got a push button that will raise and lower the cheek piece. So that is nice. The only downside is that it's quite a bit lighter weight than the uh, Magpul PRS that was on it before. And the reason I say that's a downside is because typically on precision rifles, to help mitigate recoil, uh, you know, that felt recoil into the shooter, we like a heavy rifle. You know, my competition bolt action is pushing 20 pounds. And it would help a lot, especially on an AR type rifle that has a very long lock time, uh, a lot of moving parts inside of it, uh, a heavier gun would be better. Um, so I may personally switch this to the, uh, the Magpul PRS. But for now, this one seems to be working fine. I really don't have any complaints other than the lightweight. Moving forward to that, the grip is the Magpul uh, Myad grip. It's got the rubber texture on it. No issues there. Uh, seems to be a, a solid grip. You know, pretty standard. Uh, moving forward to that, we've got ambidextrous controls uh, on all the Seekins SP10s with one exception, and that is the charging handle. That is still operated off of the left-hand side. At least the catch is on the left-hand side. Um, you know, but the, uh, the safety selector switch and the mag release and the bolt release, those are all ambidextrous on these guns. So left-handers rejoice. Moving forward to that, we do have what they call the SP3R handguard. And there are a couple of key features on this guy. Number one is um, because they have extended the, the upper receiver rail uh, kind of out and over the handguard, you've got kind of this monolithic uh, handguard here with Picatinny all the way down it. So you could actually you know, move your optics forward or run, uh, run them with night vision, that sort of thing. So that's a nice feature. Plus aesthetically, it just looks nice. Uh, another thing is, is that all the attachment points, the accessory attachment points are M-Lock. The big feature to me as a precision rifle shooter is that the handguard on the bottom is wide and flat. You know, so it mimics a good uh, PRS style or competition style stock in that sense, you know, like from Manners or somebody like that. You get this nice wide platform to rest on barricades, uh, to, a, to attach to a tripod or a bipod, those sorts of things, run it on top of a bag, and it just provides more stability for the shooter. Forward to that, we got the barrel. This particular barrel is the 18 inch uh, from them. And the contour, I believe, is about a medium sized contour. You know, it gets thicker back towards uh, the barrel nut. So it's not the exact same contour all the way down. Um, but it is thick enough that you're not gonna have to worry about too much heat under sustained fire. This is a match grade barrel and it is a one and 11 twist, I believe. Ideally for the heavier projectiles that I like to run, which is the 175 grains, I would like to have had a one in 10 twist, but this being the one in 11 seems to handle those pretty well. And we get into the precision of the rifle uh, as, it, as it looked on paper uh, in a little bit. Forward to that, we've got uh, what they call the ATC muzzle device. And this is a muzzle brake that has four ports on the side, which is becoming kind of industry standard to mitigate recoil on these heavier calibers, you know, like a 6.5 Creedmoor or 308, those sorts of things. A four port brake is kind of what you want. Forces all those gases out to the side and back towards the shooter. And, uh, you know, thereby pushing the rifle forward, minimizing the felt recoil to the shooter. So that's a plus, especially when shooting a 308. Not like this has a ton of recoil, but that muzzle brake does help. It kind of keeps that barrel from flipping, keeps it down, and that felt recoil uh, to a minimum. 
Kind of coming back to the inside of the gun now, lower receiver parts, we've got the trigger. And this comes uh, from the factory with a competition trigger from Timney, and it is supposed to be set at three pounds. For me personally, I tested it and it came in closer to three and a half pounds. Uh, there might be a little bit more of adjustment there yet, and I'll have to check that on, on my own, but uh, my test weight came in at around three and a half pounds. So the ammo I used in this gun, guys, I, I kind of mentioned it, uh, I like the heavier projectiles, so the 175 grains. And I tested uh, the Fiocchi brand, match grade, 175s, the uh, SIG, 175 grain match grades, and the Federal Gold Medal match in 175 grain. So as far as an optic goes, Vortex sent over the Viper PST. This is the Gen 2, 5 to 25 by 50. And uh, as far as all the, all the details between the Gen 1 and the Gen 2, you'll have to go look that up on your own. I'm not going to get into it. But what I do know is that the glass clarity is so, so much better on this one. Um, really no complaints at all. It is a noticeable difference between an older model PST that I have and the Gen 2. Um, edge to edge clarity, brightness of the glass, especially in that say, you know, 10 to 15 times power range, you know, all optics as you get them past that 15 times, past that 10 times really, but past that 15 times and on up to their max magnifications, you know, everything shrinks down in there. And, um, you know, it's just not quite as bright on any scope that you, that you run. But this guy seems to be plenty bright. No complaints from me. I love the EBR2C reticle in there and um, so many controls, so many adjustability points and um, everything just seems to work. All right, now I'm gonna show you how the SP10 performed accuracy wise. What you're watching here is five round groups that I shot at 100 yards. Uh, the F stands for Fiocchi, the S is for SIG, and the FG is for Federal Gold Medal Match. Again, all these rounds are 175 grain match grade loads. And for the guys that like these details, uh, the temperature was 60 degrees, relative humidity 65%, wind was from the 12 o'clock at about 7 miles per hour. There was a pretty heavy mirage this day. Uh, and I was shooting seated from a concrete bench. Bipod for front support and sandbag for rear support. Again, this is my personal rifle. I typically shoot the Fiocchi Exacta 175 grain match loads through it. And I have shot this test before and received similar, if not slightly better results. Ideally, I would shoot my zeroing groups from the prone position, but the low level mirage was so bad, I had to get up off the ground to see clearly. As it was, the mirage was giving me issues and the late afternoon sun was glaring in the scope pretty bad. The Fiocchi Exacta through this rifle generally gives me better than three quarter inch groups at 100 yards. You can see the measurements for each group here. Each ammo ended up producing better than one MOA groups at 100 yards, so I guess I shouldn't really complain, especially through a gas gun like this AR-10. But when you're used to getting 3 8 inch groups from a custom bolt action, this tends to be a tough pill to swallow. Just need to remind myself it's a different tool for a different job, I guess. I also wanted to see what kind of groups the Fiocchi would get at 600 yards on paper, and as you can see here, the group at distance remained slightly better than one MOA. Guys, thanks for watching today. Uh, you know, I, I really don't think there's a better um, AR-10 out there on the market. Uh, obviously, I personally chose this one. So for me, I'm a little bit biased, I suppose, because I personally own this one. But uh, I do think it's a fabulous platform for the money. Uh, I don't think you can go wrong. So give them some love. I'm going to leave a, a link to their website down in the description. And also, please consider checking out our sponsor, Ventura Munitions. They provide us with some ammunition and are very generous to us here at TFB TV, and we greatly appreciate it. Give them some love, and also consider supporting us through Patreon. You know, always lots of giveaways going on there for our Patreon members and supporters, so give that a look, and uh, tune in again soon for another great video from TFB TV.